Hi, everybody. My name is Andrew Shikiar, Executive Director and Chief Marketing Officer at Fight Alliance. I'd like to thank you all for attending this summit today. And I hope that this finds all of you weathering the, the tail end, what's hopefully the tail end, of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, in one piece and, and looking forward to all of us um, getting back to you know, the old normal in the near future. Uh, we have a great agenda today. So what I want to do in this session is just set the stage for the rest of the contents while also giving you some added background and context on FIDO for those of you who are newer to our community. For starters, when you're think, talking things like identity, authentication, and, and payments, uh, Europe has a regulatory environment which is complex, uh, and that may be an understatement. Over the past few years, uh, there's been lots of focus on PSD2 and GDPR, both of which are now coming fully into shape. More recently, EIDAS has been coming to the fore as member states consider the best way to implement national ID schemes. And of course, COVID-19 has had impact as well, driving requirements for potential health passes and even greater uh, cross-border cooperation. But beyond the regulatory concerns, um, you know, strong authentication has become a necessity and, and passwords simply are no longer enough. And I think we can all relate to this as consumers. Uh, passwords are hard to manage. They're clumsy. Uh, to do them correctly, you're, you're meant to have very complex, uh, unique passwords that you need to somehow remember, and then also be able to enter them into a small device or, you know, God forbid, a, a smart TV. Um, you know, for all these reasons, you know, they're, they're, they're just not suitable for consumers. Uh, but perhaps the, the worst problem with passwords is that they sit on a server. Anything on a server can and eventually will be stolen. And as such, they're incredibly easy to, to fish and to harvest and to, to you know, use for, for replay attacks. So, you know, traditionally, um, you know, people have looked to other forms of 2FA or MFA uh, to address the password problem. And to be clear, any second factor is better than a password alone. But at the end of the day, you know, an SMS or OTP, uh, they, they do add security. Um, but in some ways, the only thing worse than one password is two passwords, right? Uh, and they're also inconvenient and, and still fishable. Uh, you could certainly, you know, through a man in the middle attack, uh, you know, drive a, a replay attack, I guess, against an SMS OTP, which is why groups like NIST and other regulatory bodies have rapidly begun to deprecate them as a, a preferred form of multi-factor authentication. So that's the landscape today. Um, strong authentication is, is not a question of if, um, but, you know, how and how quickly. And in fact, that's the same imperative that FIDO Alliance inherited, you know, when, when the Alliance was launched, you know, close to 10 years ago now. Um, there's a need for something with better security and usability than passwords and, and much better, and, and also a best mess OTPs. And, and that's where FIDO's uh, goal has been since day one is to kind of find that sweet spot um, in usability and security. In fact, our tagline is simpler, stronger authentication. Uh, but FIDO Alliance does is, you know, we create open standards for simpler, stronger authentication using public key cryptography. So fundamentally trying to shift the way that markets authenticate people from one that's uh, centralized on a server to one that's a little bit more decentralized in nature and allows consumers and users to use the devices that are most likely in their hands every day. It's single gesture, possession-based, phishing-resistant user authentication. So that's been our goal since day one. Um, here's who backs FIDO Alliance. Um, this is, you know, these logos represent the 42 members on FIDO's board of directors. Um, we also have hundreds of other members and, and partners in the Alliance um, who take part in, in FIDO's activities. But in general, you know, the composition of members looks a lot like this, right? So you have companies that are you know, creating the devices and platforms that we use and touch every day. Um, we have experts in security, identity and authentication. Um, both longtime stalwarts, but also a lot of really interesting, innovative companies, some of which you'll hear from today. And then last but not least, we have the service providers um, whose businesses you know, necessitate that they securely deliver services to billions of consumers worldwide on a daily basis. Uh, not shown here are government members, which I'll talk to in, in a couple of minutes. But in general, you know, this is the type of companies that are stirring the pot and are, are driving FIDO forward. I think it's worth highlighting um, that FIDO is very unique in this regard that you know, literally, um, you know, really every company that we want to have in the FIDO conversation is in the conversation. Um, 
you know, with Apple joining in 2020, you know, it unifies all the core platforms here. Um, and there really isn't a alternative standards approach to user authentication. So let's talk briefly at a very high level about how FIDO authentication works. Um, as you see in this scheme here, you know, this is a traditional way of authenticating. You have someone sitting with a computing device of some sort, and then there's a server. And traditionally, that server holds a password, and that's a shared secret. That server also you know, might be referencing an SM SOTP code or things like that. Um, what FIDO has done at our core is we've introduced the authenticator. The authenticator is both a thing, like a FIDO security key, but also a software concept. And it's very critical to have FIDO authentication when it works. When I enroll my FIDO credentials, instead of just putting a password on a server, a unique key pair is created. The public key sets in the server and the private key, which is, you know, there's one private key dedicated to each app, that sits safely on my device in my possession. The public key has no material value, all right? So unlike a password that if and when it's stolen can be reused or, or sold on the dark web for credential stuffers to, to buy and stuff, uh, they can't do that with the public key. There's just no value to it. So that's a, a fundamental difference um, of FIDO. One, one reason why you know, this approach is helping break the credential theft cycle. In any case, going back to the FIDO authentication process, um, for me to you know, use my private key, to activate the private key, if you will, I need to verify myself, either verifying that I'm in possession of the device or you know, using a biometric verifying that it, it is indeed me. Once that's done, the FIDO authentication process can take place uh, there's a simple, well, there's a, a challenge response mechanism that happens between the private key and the public key, between the server and the authenticator. In that dialogue, a lot of um, unique data is exchanged about the key attribute, um, about the, the device. Uh, we have something called the metadata service that, that helps you know, run these lookups, if you will. Um, and this is what prevents phishing and prevents account takeovers. You know, one thing, um, we talked earlier about how, how FIDO prevents phishing. Phishing is a, a huge threat, and we all know this, but one statistic that always jumps out to me is the fact that a well-designed phishing attack has a, over a 40% success rate, right? So not a click rate, a success rate. Um, and that's simply because fishers are good at their jobs. And most of us are good at our jobs, but our job doesn't include spotting phishing necessarily, let alone the consumers all over the world. So it's very important that we embed this form of authentication into devices that consumers use every day to start to attack and, and, and stop this plague of phishing and account takeovers. So FIDO creates a, a critical baseline for user authentication that is unfishable uh, due to the possession-based nature of the FIDO approach. FIDO's goals you know, from day one was, was to certainly uh, reduce reliance on passwords, but in some ways as a means to an end, uh, because we're really trying to address the data breach problem. And the vast majority of data breaches are caused by weak credentials. We've also seen more recently uh, you know, the, the modern wave of attacks, if you will, the ransomware attacks and things like that, a lot of those are, are being caused or at least accelerated or, or exacerbated uh, through passwords. Um, so FIDO addresses all those problems, but we realized that for our mission to, to be complete, there were some adjacent work areas that also needed to be addressed. So first, an IoT. We, we've all read about IoT security breakdowns, the baby camp takeovers and things like that, but it's a much bigger problem than that actually. And so FIDO is working to take the password out of IoT. Uh, just last month, we announced our FIDO device onboard launch. Uh, and we've seen a lot of very positive feedback on this way of addressing uh, IoT authentication, IoT security. Uh, but more germane, germane to today's discussion is work we're doing in identity verification. You know, FIDO realized that we had to strengthen identity verification assurance to support better and safer account recovery. And as part of that, we launched something called the Identity Verification and Binding Working Group, which is driving this work forward. Um, we have a whole session dedicated to this, um, but in essence, at the core of what we're trying to do, we're seeking to establish best practices for possession-based identity verification, which will not only enable safer and easier and stronger account recovery, but in doing so, we'll also stop hackers from using the account recovery process as an opening for social engineered account takeovers. So it's very important work that, um, that FIDO is now driving forward. I talked earlier about um, you know, regulation and, and, and the European regulatory complex. Of course, you can't talk about that without talking about GDPR and PSC2, uh, but, but FIDO is unique, I think, amongst standards development organizations and standards types bodies in the sense that we have a very active um, policy 
engagement program. And, and, and it's really important to us to be aligned with these activities. So whether it's um, through our many government members inside of FIDO Alliance who are helping inform uh, the shape of our outputs or through engaging with NGOs uh, who are influencing global regulatory policy, you know, it's certainly a priority for FIDO Alliance. And it's little wonder that we see governments actually deploying you know, FIDO for user authentication. Um, so whether it's uh, the UK uh, Verify program, NHS, login.gov, which is a FIDO, leverages FIDO authentication to protect US citizen services. But we see a lot of governments you know, gravitating towards FIDO to protect their e-citizen and government employee processes. And on a related note, you know, there's certainly a growing trend of government recognizing uh, FIDO, uh, either citing it um, as a preferred uh, approach to user authentication or, or, or similar outputs. Um, some recent anecdotes in the United States you know, during the 2020 election, FIDO was cited as the preferred mechanism to protect uh, election campaign infrastructure, which is one reason why there were no uh, repeats in 2016 where elections got hacked or campaigns got hacked. Um, also, uh, President Biden recently issued an executive order requiring MFA uh, for all government services. Uh, and we think FIDO will be explicitly cited as part of that as well. So bring this back to you know, today's discussion um, I want to talk a little bit about the FIDO imperative in Europe. Um, and strong authentication is a, is a global imperative, but of course, there's some European specific aspects of these things. You know, we're talking about protecting user accounts. So how do you do that um, while you know, meeting GDPR requirements? Um, simpler signing experiences. Um, how do you, you do that while considering PSD2, but also, you know, some of the historical MFA rollouts, you know, throughout Europe. And then how do all these considerations you know, relate to the emergence of open banking? Uh, both for incumbents as well as some of the newer banks that don't have the same technical legacy for better or for worse. And all told, you know, we think that FIDO is becoming part of the web's DNA. This is a pretty audacious statement, but if you think about it, you know, what do you need to have in place to qualify for that statement, to be part of the web's DNA? I think there's three things. First, you need to see industry standardization and collaboration around the technology, which FIDO certainly does have. Secondly, you need to be shipping at scale in devices and platforms, and FIDO's doing that today. And last but not least, you wanna see strong regulatory and government embrace. And that's, you know, again, the direction that FIDO's heading in. So this is really, you know, your opportunity, you know, to leverage over 4 billion devices that support authentication, FIDO authentication, you can grow the, join the growing list of authentication leaders. Uh, this is a subset of companies that are deploying FIDO. You'll hear from some of them today. Um, but really what you're seeing here is it's cross sector, cross-border and cross-industry um, you know, usage of FIDO authentication. So here's what we can commit to you if you are interested in leveraging FIDO authentication. You know, three things. First, we'll continue to evolve FIDO specifications to make sure they're, they're fit for market and that they're, everything's smoothed out for deployments. Secondly, we can help you meet regulation while improving your customer experience. Uh, we're very focused on UX. In fact, we'll be issuing some guidelines on the best way to deploy FIDO for desktop authenticators very soon. We're we'll doing more in that regard as well. And then last but not least, we'll provide resources to you to help you be successful. Um, you know, not just events like this, but we have deployment working groups inside of FIDO, understanding, addressing, and issuing best practices on different deployment scenarios. And on that note, here's today's lineup um, of, of expert speakers. Uh, we're gonna start uh, with a keynote from our signature sponsor, Knock Knock, uh, with Rolf Lindemann. Followed by that, uh, we're pleased to have uh, Steve Panifer of uh, Consultant Hyperion give his independent perspective on the identity landscape in Europe these days. Uh, we'll then have a case study from BBVA. Um, we'll then hear from our other signature sponsor, Keyless, uh, on their perspectives on the journey to zero trust. Uh, following that, we will have a discussion on FIDO and EIDAS, looking at actual real-world implementation in the Czech Republic. Uh, we'll then have a roundtable discussion on FIDO and delegated authentication. Uh, and last but not least, we're going to pick up the identity topic, which I alluded to earlier, uh, with a, a roundtable on uh, the state of technology and regulation for remote identity verification in Europe. So with that, um, I'd like to thank you all for being here today. Uh, and I want to give a special thank you to our signature sponsors, Knock Knock and Keyless. Without their support, this wouldn't be fully possible. So enjoy the, the summit, and we'll look forward to seeing you on a future FIDO event.